our dear viewers and listeners. Greetings to you in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. As we begin today's Bible study, let's dedicate this moment in prayer to God. Father, we thank you. We, we acknowledge without you there is nothing we can do. We submit to the Lordship of your word. Through us, minister your truth. Speak through us. Establish your word, King of glory. Yes, Lord. That it is the only thing that changes lives, King of glory. Yes, Lord. That your glory might be revealed yes, Lord. as the glory of the only begotten of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. We are humbled by your presence. Have your way, Jesus. Yes, have, your way. have your way, O King of glory. Yes, Lord. We step aside. Yes, Lord. That you might be made manifest. Yes, Lord. For you say us in your word that when you are lifted, yes, you draw men to you. Yes, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. Yes, Lord. Where we lift you high above. Yes, Lord. That through us you draw all the world to you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 There is this very disturbing question. Concerning what goes on in life. Concerning the evil that is being propagated throughout the world. Concerning the violence that we see. The darkness. The, all the murders that we see and the death. And the question is that will there be an end to all this? The fact is when we read the scriptures we find the only comfort for mankind. An emphatic yes they will be. And today's text will help us understand what will happen to evil at the end of the age. Let's read that today's text. And we'll be taking it from Revelation chapter 14. From verse 14 to verse 20. And we will read this text also. In tandem with another text. Which will be the book of Joel. Chapter 3. From verse 9 to verse 16. But let's first read Revelation chapter 14 from verse 14 to 20. This is what the Bible says. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and seated on the cloud one like the son of man with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand and another angel came out of the temple calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud put in your sickle and reap for the hour of to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe so he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle across the earth. And the earth was ripped. Then another angel came out of the temple with in heaven. He too had a sharp sickle. 
and another angel came out from the altar. The angel who has authority over the fire. And he called out with a loud voice to the one who had this sharp sickle. Put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth. For its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the grape harvest of the earth and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trodden outside the city. And blood flowed from the wine press. As high as a horse's bridle for 1,600 furlongs. I want us to look at Joel chapter 3. From verse 9 to verse 16. The Bible says proclaim this among the nations. Consecrate for war. Stir up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. And your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say. I am a warrior. Hasten and come, all you surrounding nations. And gather yourselves there. Bring down your warriors. O oh Lord, let the nations stir themselves up and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Go in. Tread for the wine press is full. The vats overflow. For their evil is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon are dark. And the stars withdraw their shining. The Lord roars from Zion. And utters his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earthquake. But the Lord is a refuge. To his people. A stronghold to the people of Israel. Now, when we look at the, the text from the book of Revelation, there are basically two plausible interpretations that we pick from there. One interpretation is that the verses in the book of Revelation, when you tie them in with what we just read in Joel. These describe two things. First, the ingathering of the godly. And then the judgment of the wicked on the last day. I want us to see what happens in the book of Revelation. We see two persons who have 
sickles in their hand. The first one was like the son of man. With a sharp sickle in his hand. And we see him swing his sickle across the earth. And the Bible says, and the earth was ripped. Then we see another angel come from the temple. He too also had a sharp sickle. And he swung his sickle. And he gathered a grape harvest. Which he threw into the wine press of the wrath of God. So here we see two sickles. Here we see two harvests. And often the question is there is one that we don't doubt that the second harvest, the one from verse 17 to verse 20 is a harvest that deals with the judgment. But how about the first harvest that we see. What does it deal with? The main argument for many people believe, the first school of thought believes that all deal with judgment. And this understanding is picked from the book of Joel. Chapter 3 from verse 9 to 16. Here you will notice that this twofold judgment is put in or ends with the harvest being thrown into the wine press. And for many people, they interpret the judgment of Revelation chapter 14 as the judgment of the wicked. However, there are others who hold that the first Harvest is the harvest of the grain. And the second harvest is the harvest of the grape. Why the grain? Because the word that is used there in verse 15, which talks about the ripening of the harvest. The word used there is the word that refers to the ripening or the drying of grain. Which is different from the ripening of the second harvest. The one of the second harvest refers to the ripening of grapes. And so here we have two harvests, one of the grain and the other of the grapes. And so when you look at it from that context, which I think is the correct view, we are then able to understand what this text is bringing to us today. Because whereas this has the background in Joel, here Jesus is pointing, paints the picture for us in another text that we are going to look at, which will help us be able to synchronize the book of Revelation, the book of Joel, and now we will look at the book of Matthew chapter 13. In the book of Matthew chapter 13, we will pick it up from verse 24. Here Jesus paints another picture for us with a parable concerning the kingdom of heaven. And he said the kingdom of heaven is compared to a man 
who sowed good seed in his field. And while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the tears appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did we not sow good seed in your field? How then is it that we have tears? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants say to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, no. Lest in gathering these tears, you root up the wheat along with them. So he said, let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds or the tares first. Bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. I want us to drop down to verse 36. And the Bible tells us that when he had left the crowds and gone into the house, his disciples came to him saying, explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And he told them that the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The tares are the seeds of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. So just as the tears are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. He says the son of man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fear of furnace. In that place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And he said, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. And he says, he who has ears, let him hear. So, what do we see here? We see the book of Revelation for chapter 14 from verse 14 to verse 20. Sort of a hybrid book of two teaching of both Joel chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 13 being all brought together in one place. So, here is what is going to happen. John, the Bible says, saw a white cloud. And seated on the cloud, one like the Son of Man, with a golden crown on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. That is Revelation 14, 14. And this is the picture of Jesus Christ. And for many people, they get disturbed with verse 15. Because 15 says, 
and another angel comes out of the temple. Crying out with a loud voice. To him who sat on the cloud. And tells him to put in his sickle and reap. For the hour to reap has come. For the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. And to many of them asking, how then is the angel then telling the Son of Man? Uh, the, to them, it seems inappropriate for this to happen. But I want you to understand what is happening here. Let's consider where the angel comes from. He comes from the heavenly temple. In other words, he comes from God. So the word that he brings is the word from God. It is God's word, not the angel's words. And to corroborate that, we need to go to Mark chapter 13. Demo Marko Kumina Satu. Verse 32. When the disciples come to Jesus and want to know when the end will be inside, Jesus' response in that time was that concerning that day, of that hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven know the Son, only the Father. And what do we see? happening in verse 15. We see the Father revealing to the Son the time of the harvest of the earth and telling him that this time has now come. Therefore he should put the sickle and reap for the hour has come and the earth is fully ripe. And there is no controversy with that. And the other one is because this angel is described as another angel. The one who comes from the temple. Some hold that he is another like the son of man. But the Bible doesn't describe him that. So he is another angel. Like the ones we saw from verse 6 to verse 12. And so we now that we have the complete picture, what happens? We see now the Son of Man bringing in a harvest. When we corroborate this with the parable of the wheat and the tares, we now understand what is happening. Because remember, the tares have been separated from the wheat. So the harvest that goes to the kingdom is the harvest of the wheat. The harvest that goes to judgment is the harvest of the tares. Having understood that, I want you to see something concerning the harvest. And let's collaborate with what Jesus said to us. Mark chapter 13, verse 24 to 27. He says, but in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened. And the moon will not give its light. And the stars will all be falling from heaven. The powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth 
to the ends of heaven. That is Jesus describing the events. Paul, Paul, in his letter to the church in Thessalonica, chapter 4, verse 16 to 17, tells us that for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we always be with the Lord. What this describes is that moment when the sickle is sent out to reap a harvest on the earth. So what will happen? Christ will come. Christo alija. And what will he do? Alikolati. He will gather his elect into A glory. Aja kunga nyaba londebe mchitiwa. And then what will he do? Amalakolati. He will gather the ungodly abata jakatun into judgment. Boba tuali wemu kusali wemi sango. And I want you to internalize this. Now, this is what the Bible then tells us will happen. Another angel comes out of the temple in heaven. And when this angel comes out, he speaks to the angel with the sickle. Not one like the son of man. He's speaking to the other angel with the sharp sickle. And he tells him to put out the sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. For its grapes are ripe. Remember that all the judgments that we've seen in the book of Revelation come from the altar. And then here we see another angel come who has authority over the fire. And it is this angel that commands the one with the sickle and tells him to gather the clusters of the grapes from the vine of the earth because its grapes are ripe. So now I want you to see something and let's not mistake in it. This judgment is a judgment that is being driven by God and his Christ. They are the ones that are pronouncing this judgment. But here in the book, we see the angels executing the judgments of God. Why? Because angels are ministering spirits. And they are right now ministering executing God's judgment but also bringing together God's elect. So they are responsible for carrying out the assignment of heaven. I remember telling you before that hell as well as heaven, are God's project. Make no mistake. Hell is not the devil's paradise. No, no, no. It is the place God has reserved for the devil and his angels and all those that will 
subject or submit themselves to the service of the devil. So, let's understand this. Now, often in the Bible we see wine symbolizing joy. But what do we see here now? We see something different. We see wine symbolizing the wrath and the judgment of God. I, I may point out something to you which may not be significant, but if you read it in context, you understand what this is all about. When we talked about the angels as ministering spirits, you're going to see something in the text that we just read. If you looked at John 14 from 6 to 20, you're going to see that the first section will have three angels who made the pronouncements. Then we see one like the Son of Man. Then we see another three angels from 14 to 20. So what does that mean? You have three, you have another three. And you have the Son of Man. So what we see here are seven beings. Which spell the completeness of God's mission on earth. With regard to gathering the elect and gathering the ungodly. The elect to get to heaven and the ungodly to receive their judgment. When you look at all this, it places you and I in one bucket or the other. For those that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and are in a vital relationship with Him, we saw last week that when they die, they are blessed because they go to rest from their labors. And their, their, their acts, their works go with them. Not that the works qualify them to get into that position. It is faith in Jesus Christ that takes them to that place. But as they go, their works follow them. You see, many people believe that their acts of, of charity, their good works will get them to a public speaking with God. It will give them access that the God of justice will consider their works and somehow reward them for what they have done. That's not the way it works. It begins with faith in Jesus Christ. So if you have the son, you have life. If you have the son, then you have passed from death. So now your works will follow you to receive a reward. If you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ on this side of eternity, then no matter what kind of prayer is made for you, you will not make it to heaven. No matter what gifts are given, no matter what festivals are held, no, no, it does not matter who's, 
who bids you fairway doesn't matter how many people mourn for you on earth sinzo nga bameka abajja kulumbero bameka abajjo kusibulu okuva kunsi your faith in jesus christ okukiriza ko mu yesu christo is the key you believe with your heart okiriza no mutima gwo the lord jesus yesu ye mukama and confess with your mouth no yatula nakabwa ko and then you are saved awo lyo omaleno lyo ko lyo koke remember what the third angel in revelation chapter 14 and verse 9 warned about jukira malaiko no woksa to mukubikolwa 14 onyiro mwenda okulabula ko yaleta he said if anyone Yagamant oyoyena worships the beast and his image. Wa sala wo kusinze ensolo ne kifanga nti. He receives the mark on his forehead. Na twala kabonero ke kuchenyichi. All on his hand. Oba kumukono. He also will drink the wine of God's wrath. Unaja kunyweshebwa omwenge gwo busungu bwa katonda. Poured full strength. Ogwiridwa yo mubujuvu bwa. It's not going to be diluted. And the Bible says he himself meaning this will be an individual. Bible yegamba oyo yenyini kwe gamba sechinomoyo. And he says he will be tormented with fire. And brimstone. Kutulugunyizibwa oba kubonya abanjizwa no muliro nechi bitu. In the presence of the holy angels. Mumaso gaba malaika abatukufu. And in the presence of the lamb. Ne mumaso go mwana gwendi. Now here we see the sixth angel. Wanotula ba malaika wo mukaga. Who is carrying out this judgment? Katinga ye ateka munkola omusango guli. Of those who have worshiped the beast. Nga asali ne misango bali abasi nze nsolo. And the judgment is described as grapes thrown into a great wine place of the wrath of god omusanga gunnyonyolanga emizabibu ejisulidwa musogolero eliyo busungu bwa katonda and the wine press was trodden outside the city and blood flowed esogolero nelirinyirirwa waberi we kibuga ngalivamu omusayi gukulukuta from the wine press as high as the horses bridle nga gujja kuyika munji nyo kutuka ku nkoba zembalasi which is 1600 furlongs ngalye bangi lya lukumi mulukaga which you would bring it to about 184 miles o chigeragira ne mailo chikumi muchinana munya now this is a gruesome image chine chifana nyichantisa this is a picture of blood flowing bakulaga omusayi ogukulukuta 184 miles obuwanvu mailo chikumi muchinana munya and the application of the lessons for us are compelling kati ebyo kuyiga mu bino byantisa number 1 ekisoka for those that have believed in Jesus Christ abakiriza mu Yesu Kristo it gives you a clear picture of what you have escaped bakulaga chichi chowonye for those that still reject the lord jesus ababa cha jemera mukama wa fe yesu it points you to what awaits you bakulaga echi kulindiride and it is a fear something echi ntu cha ntisa so what is it that we must take home kati chichi chogendo kujigira ko wano one We need to get to that place. Today you to come to the place that have believed on the Lord Jesus. Abakiriza mu Yesu Christ. You have a message to carry. Olino bubako bokutwala. You have a gospel to proclaim. Oyine njiri yokubulira. It is upon you right now. Chikugwani dekakano. To be a herald of the good news. Okubwo mubaka wa maulira amalunji. Of the good news of the salvation of God. Amaulira amalunji bwe bulokozi bwa katonda. For the Bible tells Bible yegamba in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 28 Mubalumi mukaga abiri abiri munana that the wages of sin is death empera yechi bikufa but the gift of God na yechi labo cha katonda is eternal life we bulamo obutagwa through Jesus Christ okuita mu Yesu Christ we have a gospel to proclaim tuline njiriye yokubulira we have a mandate to fulfill tuline katale yokutukiriza to reach out to lost humanity tugende eri abantu ababula this message of God saving grace. No bako bwe kisacha katonde kirokola. Because the Bible tells us. Bible yetu gamba. That how will they believe? Bana kiriza batya. If no one has preached to them. Ngateri ya genzu okubabulira. It may appear that this message 
is hopeless. Of foolishness to those that are perishing. But we need to go on with this message. And reach out to everyone. Pleading with them. To receive this gospel of the kingdom of God. Why? Because we are the reconcilers between men and God. We need to pray for, for the Lord of the harvest. To send forth the laborers. That even as we are participating in reaching the loss of the gospel. We are also praying that God send forth laborers. So that a harvest may come in. The Bible says that God does not desire that the wicked perish. That is why he sent his only son. Out of love for humanity. That all should come to the knowledge of faith in him. That none should perish. So it is your mandate and my mandate to reach out with our message. And the message is twofold. The message we preach with our mouth. And the message of the life that we live. So it can't be what we say. Being different from how we live. Our lives must reflect what we say. In totality, this is the message that we are carrying. It is the message the world is waiting for. It is the message your neighbor needs to hear. Your life needs to be a testament. It needs to be a book. It needs to be a script. Read by all men. Short of that, Jesus says, If you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of them before my father and his angels. So we have got a job to do. Don't discriminate. Everyone needs the gospel. We have all sinned. And you know the tendency of humanity is to trivialize sin. Is to make light the sin that they commit. But from the text that we see, when you look at the severity of God's judgment, when you see what God does to the sinful, to the wicked, it should stir us up to go and preach this gospel like never. So that when we get back home, we we'll have a fruit of our labors to show. We will get a reward, the Bible tells us. But it begins with how we live our lives here on earth. It begins with who we worship. It begins with how we revere God. How we love Him. Jesus put it this way. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He sent us to preach this gospel. It is his very last command. If we love him, we will graciously go out and preach this gospel and be part of the reapers and be part of the laborers of this end time harvest. So let me address that one today. 
who has never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. God loves you. He does not want to destroy you. The plans he has for you are for good and not for evil. He has a plan for your life. The Bible tells us that wide is the way that leads to destruction. But it says narrow is the path and narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life. And it said there be few that find it. Why doesn't he talk about finding the broader way? It is because we are already on it. It is leading to destruction. You need to find the narrow way. The narrow way is Jesus Christ. Today, if you place your life, if you make him the savior of your life, he will lead you on the way to God. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Why don't you say this prayer? Say, dear God, I am a sinner. Today, I realize that I am a candidate of your wrath. But you have made a way that I may escape this wrath by believing on the Lord Jesus. Therefore, today, Lord Jesus, I invite you in my life as my Lord and personal Savior. Save me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Write my name in the book of life. That on that day of the great harvest, I will stand amongst the elect. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I will live this life for you according to the design that you have made for me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now you have been wonderfully saved. Now that you have made that prayer, there is that number on the screen. Please call. Someone will pick up that phone and give you the very first steps. To you who is out still out there that needs to join this grand team of soul winners. This is my message for you. Remember, there is the principle of harvest. You reap what you sow. You reap later than you sow. And you reap more than you sow. So participate in this grand scheme of the kingdom. And you will reap a reward. Later, but much more. God bless you as you embark on this. From Dominion Church, till we meet again. Say shalom. God richly bless you.